This is episode 142. Are you making your website work for you? Are you getting the leads and the actions you want people to take? In today's episode, I will be going over how to build a conversion strategy for your site so that your content can actually generate the returns you're looking for. This is the third part of my content creation mini series. So let's get started. Welcome to the Calm Marketer Podcast. My name is Kenneth Fong, a digital marketer on a mission to help businesses thrive. I'll bring you on my marketing journey where you'll get to learn from my experiences as an INFP navigating an extroverted world and get actionable marketing tips for your business. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let's begin. So now we are going into the third part of content creation. So you created your article, uh, everything is complete, and now what you need to do is try to brainstorm and strategize how you want your article to work for you, right? You need to make your article encourage people to take some type of action, not just read and leave. You want them to take some type of action. And in order to do that, you need to give people some type of reason to take an action. And in most cases, you need to give what is called an irresistible offer. You need to give them an offer that they can't refuse. Now, this phrase, I think, was coined by Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels. At least that's where I first heard it. Was, an, was creating an irresistible offer that people will be happily be able to give you their name, email, and phone number, or whatever action you want them to take. You need to make sure that the offer matches the search intent of the article. Because I see this a lot. You know, I see a lot of articles that ask people to, you know, buy or download something when it doesn't really match the article. So for example, you don't want to tell people to buy your product from a 100% informational article, right? So if the article touches on people that are higher up the funnel, you don't want them to buy right away because it doesn't really make sense. If the article is a lot more fits lower down the funnel, then yes, you can tell people to buy. But if it's higher up, then you want to make sure that the irresistible offer matches the the search intent of the article, right? That's one thing. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that with these offers, with SEO, it's not just about leads. Yes, leads are great, but there are other ways to make your article work for you, right? So SEO can help you increase your brand awareness. So if you are a newer company that you want to really grow and and educate people on, you could use articles to increase your brand awareness. You can also use it to build your remarketing lists, right? So uh, people who visit your article, uh, they can um, be remarketed to on Google or Facebook. And you can also use your articles to build authority in your niche. So if you are a plumber, if you are a coach or what have you, creating and publishing articles will give people a better understanding of your your strengths and give people that mindset that, hey, you are an authority in your space Maybe I should follow you. Maybe I should continue reading and learning more about you and eventually uh, buy from you, right? So when it comes to giving people an irresistible offer like um, a free book, a free ebook, a free whatever it is, you know, there's good and bads to that. There's good and bads of gated content, you know. Um, So gated content is essentially a gated piece of content that asks people to fill out a form, right? So there's good and bad reasons to have that. The pros are you can get data on your audiences. So say, for example, you are offering a free book. 
you can ask them for their job title, their budgets, what type of organization they, they are in to help you qualify the leads, right? Some cons is that it's less, there's less SEO potential and there's less links and organic, organic virality, right? So what do I mean by SEO potential? So if you have a free book, that book cannot be read by Google because it's gated, right? It's behind a form, right? So you don't have that opportunity to rank for whatever content is in that book. Also, there's less links. So if you have a free book and someone finds that free book online, but it's behind a gated content, then people most likely will not want to link to it because that content is not readily available. So those are a couple of cons with your gated content. But one tip that I can recommend is to make, make it an extension of your free content. So for example, if you are talking about an article about project management, you can create an irresistible offer that may be a project management template or maybe a worksheet, or maybe a checklist. So if you have like a uh, top 10 things to do article, you can quickly create a checklist that has those top 10 things and format it in a way where people can print it out and follow it step by step, right? So make it an extension of your free content. So that's still very, very beneficial and people are willing to give you their name, address, and phone um, to get that free content. And other things to follow for gated content, you know, um, make it the best and not available anywhere else. So if you are offering a template, a worksheet, or a checklist, make sure that that piece of content is really good, that they just can't Google it somewhere else and find it and get it for free. So make sure it's really good. Make sure it's not available anywhere else. Also, to improve your conversion rates, sometimes you don't necessarily always need to ask for an email, right? For me, I've actually have done this and actually have converted more often than not if they don't ask me for an email. Just the other day, I was actually reading an SEO blog and this blog, uh, was giving a free Google Docs, a Google spreadsheet for an SEO template. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. I actually want this free spreadsheet. And basically what they wanted me to do was to just share the article on Facebook or Twitter. And once I shared it, they unlocked the free template for me. So that was pretty cool. I didn't need to give them my email or my name. I just had to share the article. So try to do those things out. You know, don't always ask for an email. Another thing you can do is prepare a landing page with a great call to action, right? So, uh, you know, take people to another page to download that free template, that worksheet, or that checklist because that will allow your landing page to get indexed in Google and you could get traffic for that landing page. Right. So if your goal is to also get SEO traffic, you could create a landing page with a great CTA that will allow Google to actually read that landing page and actually index it in the search engines. Also, what you want to do is plan call to actions across your content. Right. So say, for example, you have a blog article, you want to make sure that you have call to actions within that blog article right? Uh, don't rely on pop-ups. I don't recommend creating just pop-ups that just pop up randomly or in the beginning. You want to make it strategic. You want to make sure your call to actions are strategically placed in your blog article. So these call to actions don't even have to be like the standard formal forms that you always see. You know, uh, call to actions, can be other things as well, right? So you can uh, ask people to comment. You can ask people to share the article. You can even make your call to actions links. So anchor CTAs, not actual buttons. 
And I've seen this implemented uh, a lot of places, and I think it's getting a lot more popular because it actually works. So don't just create an actual button or a form. You can just create a link, a link saying click here or download the template or click to download the template, something that's within the, the paragraph of your article. And you want to also eliminate what is called banner blindness, right? So what is banner blindness? That basically means that people this day and age are blinded by banner ads, right? So if you go to like CNN or any other uh, news article or any other big website, you see a lot of banner ads and people pay thousands of dollars to create these banner ads and have them up on these different websites. And over time, people get blinded. They don't look at it. You know, they they just read the content and that's it. They don't look at the side. They don't really look at the very top. If they know that it's a banner ad, they will immediately just scroll past it. So my recommendation is don't make your CTAs look like banners. So the best ways to design your CTAs that don't look like ads is to, like I said earlier, uh, make it in line uh, with, with the text, right? So maybe click here or something like that. You also want to inline with the form. So you could add a form, but make it in line. So maybe between two paragraphs or in the beginning or closer towards the end of the article, add a form within that text, place it in the body, not in the side panel. Also create a highlighted piece of content. So maybe create larger text with maybe maybe different colors. You know, you could even do a call to action with a time delay. So maybe adding a countdown, um, that could be beneficial as well, right? Last thing that I wanna mention is focus on only one CTA per page. So one CTA per page and not more than one. So if you are offering a free template, don't offer you know a free template, a free worksheet, a free checklist. Just offer one thing per page. The more simple it is, the better, right? So, um, if you want to dive more deep into all of this this information that I spoke spoke about today, um, I recommend you to you know enroll in the SEO Writing Masterclass by Surfer. So basically, everything everything that I'm teaching you today. It's what I learned on the SEO Writing Masterclass. Um, it's a pretty good class um, that is built by Surfer, and I will include a link in the in the show notes um, for you to learn about it and enroll in the masterclass with me. So hopefully you thought this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Go to thecalmmarketer.co forward slash connect, and you can connect with me through there. So I will see you on the next episode.